Hi, my name is Sean Wildermuth. We're going to try to use actions to build, to create a common build for our GitHub project. And we're going to be using actions to do that. I'm making this video for a couple of reasons. One, I really couldn't find a good walkthrough of a really simple, straightforward CI build. And the second reason is that I've been lazy for a long time and I haven't been doing proper CI builds. So what we're going to do here is actually create an action in GitHub for creating just a simple build and running some tests. And you're going to see everything. If I run into problems, I'm going to stop and create them. I'm not going on much of a script here. Let's just do it and see what happens. Because likely if I'm running into the issues, you'll likely run into those same issues. So it'd be nice to see how they're fixed. So I'm going to start with a project that I haven't actually added an action yet to called my Meta Weblog project. And this is a pretty simple project that's out there that allows you to add the Meta Weblog API that WordPress and LiveWriter and Markdown Monster all use to allow you to post things. And you can actually see I have a build passing with AppFair, but I'm going to move this directly into our own project. And so all of this actually starts right here on the website. So if you go to Actions, GitHub Actions is going to try to give you a chance by looking at your repository to figure out what kinds of action you want to do. And for us, it's guessed correctly that there's a solution in there, so we want to cr actually create a .NET Core. And the way actions work is they have a number of recipes, and we'll see a couple of them when we get a little closer. But if you're doing Node or you're doing Rust or Python or whatever the case may be, they have these recipes as sort of a starting point. So let's set up the workflow for our .NET Core. And all this really does is just make a copy of that recipe and put in a new YAML file into our project. You'll notice it creates it in a .github workflows directory, and then we can go ahead and name it. And I'll name it very cleverly, the build. And now that we have it, let's talk about this YAML file. By editing it here on the website, we're actually gonna get IntelliSense. So if I try to come down here and just say like, uses and it's wrong, We'll actually get errors here. And if we want to trigger autocomplete, we can also just use the control space and it'll give us a list of options as we type. What's most important is it's going to do some error checking as we're, we're doing this. And so let's talk about the project top down and then we'll sort of discuss what's happening. First, we need a name, and this name actually is gonna be one we're gonna use later. So I'll just call it our build and test. And this is gonna be a visible name in the actions to see whether they're actually being run. And so the, the name is just the name, and then on is when to actually do this action. And anytime we push to the project, we're gonna do it. You could do this on specific builds, on specific version numbers, on things being tagged. There's a number of different ways to actually kick off one of these actions. And then the jobs says, we want to do a build. I'm gonna run this on a container on the latest version of Ubuntu. And that's just the default for this sort of project. There are different containers that you can be building on, but this just says open up a container and allow me to do some things. First, in order to do this, it's gonna give me a list of steps. And each of these dashes represents a collapsible region as you're watching these. So you're gonna want these to sort of be in a row. Now, the first one we're gonna use is actually to go and get a checkout of all our code. So we're inside of, of this container, we're gonna check out all of our code, and then we wanna go ahead and add .NET. Now in our case, we may be dealing with a, a newer version of .NET. I know that this meta weblog is actually using the 2.2 version, so we can leave it there. But if we are dealing with 3.1, this is the, the version of .NET, not of the SDK. So we could certainly do 3.01 here. But I'm gonna leave it at 2.2.108 because that's what I'm actually using for meta weblog. No reason to upgrade it that way we can still maintain it with older projects that still need it. And so this action, setting up .NET Core, is using this action to set up .NET and add it. And then finally we're saying build with .NET and we're gonna tell it where to build it. 
okay? So let's start this commit for a minute. Actually, I'm going to do this in a different way. I'm going to open up a new tab with my code because I want to talk about that a little. Currently, our build here is happening here in the root of our project. But the thing I really need to build is in this source directory. This is where the solution file is so that my .NET commands work. And so what I'm going to want to add here before I run this, and you can see we're getting some IntelliSense, is working directory. And this is a relative path in your project. So we want to go to this working directory, and then we want to go ahead and build, and in this case, build the release configuration. Then I'm going to do the same thing with another named section. I'm going to say, run tests. And what are we going to do here? We're going to set that working directory again. And I'm going to run, and this is just whatever being run to the command line, and that is, of course, .NET test, right? And that's really all we need to do to do a simple build and test. What if you wanted something more? And let's talk about that for a minute. On one of my other projects, in order to run the tests, because I had some need for, for NPM, I actually needed to set up NPM or Node, really, in this project as well. And so how would I do that? I'll start by just giving it a name here, set up node, and then inside here, I want to actually do the setup of node, right? And the way we do this is we can actually go ahead and look in this marketplace for the different sorts of operations. So you can see close stale issues, setup.name for actions, etc. And I can actually just type in node here, and it'll start to look for different recipes, right? And so let's say I want to install, let's do setup node, which will probably help us, help us. And so there's a recipe for that. And if we click on it, it's not going to add it for us, but it is going to show you what that looks like. And so in our case, we could actually copy this whole piece. And we can see that it has a name. It says uses the actions for the node. So I'm going to erase this in a minute, but I want to use that action. And then it has some options here. What version, by default it's 10, what registry, and what scope, which is kind of being cut off by Firefox for some reason. But we don't need any of those. In this case, we're just saying execute this so that node, by default, 10x is installed on our machine that we're going to run, because we might have in here another operation like npm install. Now, notice that a lot of these have name, 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 and those are fine, but you could also just use run as a single line command here as well. Though I'm going to erase all this node stuff because this project doesn't use node at all. But I want you to kind of get a sense of how you would add different kinds of projects. A lot of this is copying what you see uh, instead of trying to understand the syntax in some deep, uh, important level. And, and this is, for me, pretty crucial because I want it to be simple, something I set up and I forget in many ways. So let's go ahead and start that commit and say, adding action, and I'll commit it directly to the branch. And if we go back to actions here, now that we have one, we could start that new workflow if we want, but we have this build and test action, but it's not being run at all because we haven't actually started a build. If we go back to the code, we'll actually see that we now have, because we committed it here in GitHub, that we have that build YAML here. So how are we going to actually do this? Let's go and edit our README. Now I've noticed that this has been a bug for a long time, that that wasn't actually showing the, this is what the old one looked like, this is what the new one looked like, right? So I just want to make this tiny change. We'll actually come back and change this in a minute. But more importantly, this is going to set up a new commit, a new push for us. And of course, if you had actual code ready, you could uh, make a push from anywhere. It certainly doesn't need to be at the website. I'm just trying to get all the other tools out of the way. And so we commit this change so that we actually have a new version. And over at Actions we'll see that this build and test is being run. Let's click it while it's running. And we can see it's trying to set up the job. 
and then it does a setup of .NET Core. And when it's done, it's going to collapse this and show you the next one. There's .NET Configuration. That looks like it's doing its job. And we got a build failed, right? So it didn't even get to build the test. We're actually failing to run the build. And let's figure out why. The current reference assemblies were not found to resolve this, install the SDK we're targeting for the GAC. And so the problem I have here is actually that the project itself is set up to run on top of the desktop SDK. So let's see what that looks like if I try to fix that. Let's open up Visual Studio and open the project. I didn't actually expect to need to open the project. This is a good example of what can go wrong. Because what essentially went wrong is we're trying to build this on a non-Linux container. We're trying to build it on a Linux container, but we're not actually using that Linux container. Uh, there's some code in here that's dependent on .NET 4.6.1, which of course Linux won't have. So let's open up a project. This is just where I keep all the projects. And we'll see that same structure here in our code. And if we look at the project settings, we'll see this is just run, running on .NET standard. So that should be fine. So it's probably actually the test project that isn't. And here I have the target framework as 461 instead of one that will run on a Linux framework. So I'm actually going to make this change. I'm going to change this framework to Net Core to Net Core App 22. Could that be right? Let's build it here and see what happens. See if I mislabeled it. It doesn't look like I did. Succeeded now. I must have mistyped it in some way. And now if we go back over and I'll use the uh, the Git uh, support in Visual Studio to do this, though it doesn't really matter how I do it. No, we're not using DevOps. Here's those changes. I'll go ahead and move test project to net core app to two instead of dot net four six one. I'll commit it. I'll sync it successfully synced. And because we just pushed this change, if we come back over to our uh, actions, we should see a new build action has been started automatically. And that's sort of the magic here of using actions. Now I could have changed this by trying to run on top of another um, container style. Let's see what it doesn't like. Error. Oh, there's some older changes with this. And these are both with the tests, of course. So there are issues here. Let's see the f package fallback. Oh yeah, we don't need that anymore. That was from an older version of the project, of uh, the, the um, that weren't framework, to be perfectly honest with you. Let's go ahead and look at the properties here. And sometimes they'll, in the uh, package information, they'll tell you if anything else is wrong. No, that looks all good. So let's make sure this builds locally. I'm gonna do a rebuild just to make sure. Let's make one more check-in. Isn't it nice when you don't remember everything that's supposed to be checked in? And don't judge my commit messages because they are not good. And let's come back to uh, our actions and see what happens. See if it's gotten any better. Usually when you're running these pretty commonly, you'll see that some of these steps like setting up that not core and such end up being a little faster because they've cached them. Let's see if this has gotten any better. There's all the packages. 
Don't you hate when you just watch things real time? I might speed this up when I edit it, but probably not. Builds worked. Running the tests. Starting test execution. Eight tests. Eight passed. Woohoo! We're all good. So anytime I make a change, this will actually build now. And you might have noticed that earlier I had a... Let's go back to the project. I actually have an app there in here. I'm going to get rid of that app there because I'm not going to use app there anymore. And I'm going to add our existing item to my solution. And that item, of course, is going to be GitHub, Workflows, and then there's my build, right? Just in case I needed to edit it here, I like to have it in the project. But more importantly, I'm going to look at that README. And instead of the build status being this app there link, I'm going to actually replace this with a new one. I'm going to see if I can remember this exactly, but it's basically an image. So in markup, that's the image sta status, and I'm going to say build status is just the, the alt tag in case this doesn't show up. And then let me see if I can remember how this goes. It is github.com, my name or my project's uh, container. If you want to think about it more in that than just your name. And then this is meta web blog. And then just like the container we saw here, workflows, and then unusually the name of the build. And that, if you remember, that was build and test. This is the not the name of the file. This is the name that we gave it here in the build. So it's this build and test that which needs to be the name. And if there's spaces in your name, you'll have to Erl encode it. And then it's just build.svg. And if I've done it right, that should, I've, unless I put the wrong name in here, it's actually badge. And it shows it's passing because this build and test is actually succeeding. So we we'll go back and adding the GitHub action badge. Let's commit it. Make sure everything's saved because I changed that. Let's go over to sync. I was going to show you how cool and do it all at the command line, but uh, it's not as interesting anymore. And if we come back and refresh our page now that we have the new one, we'll actually see no status. And that's because it's currently running. And there is usually a tiny lag between this actually running and the status updating. But since you're not going to be building every eight seconds and depending on the badge, it should work fine for you. It took 52 seconds last time. We're only in a few seconds. Let's see where it is. It should still build and test because I really haven't changed any code. So if we refresh that page, it says it's passing. Make sense? And that's how you set up CI using GitHub Actions. And if you're interested, I'll be putting a couple of badges here at the end of the video to go visit my Pluralsight courses or my personal courses. Uh, I teach a lot of Microsoft technologies, ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, uh, gRPC. Uh, I also do, in my own teaching, some Vue and some other courses, a lot of them uh, around Vue or Bootstrap 4, etc., Feel free to visit my courses if you like this uh, video and give it a thumbs up if you'd like. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.